Live. Welcome everybody um, to our um, Eat, Drink, and Pray. Everything you need to know about Birkat HaMazon. And tonight, I thank you so much for coming and we're also live on Facebook. Um, so welcome to anyone who's watching us on Facebook Live. Tonight, we are joined by Rabbi Helene Kornsgold. Um, I met Rabbi Kornsgold when she moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and then I worked for her for several years. Um, Rabbi, Kornsgold, amazing teacher. <laughs> Rabbi Kornsgold is the Director of Congregational Education at Temple Israel in Charlotte, North Carolina. She loves working with people of all ages and is constantly inspired by those she works with and teaches. Rabbi Kornsgold has worked in, Los Angeles, worked in Los Angeles, California for eight years prior to moving to the South. She was ordained in 2006 from the Rabbinical School at JTS and received her master's in Jewish education from the Davidson School at JTS. And she also graduated with a dual degree from Barnard and List College at JTS. Her free time is spent with her husband alone and their dog, Bailey, who got to go outside before we began. That is correct. <laughs> um, right. If you have a copy of the, if you have one of our uh, calendar diaries, this is the current year, um, the Birkat Amazon is inside, is in the calendar diary. If you have a copy of the Kol Echad at home, you'll find it there. If you have a copy of the Lev Shalem um, Sidur, you'll find it in there as well. And we will be sharing the screen. So, uh, Rabbi Kornsgold. Thank you, Barbara. Um, thank you so much um, for that beautiful introduction and also for inviting me tonight. So the interesting thing is when Barbara first asked me to teach tonight, this evening, um, it was before there were any stay-at-home orders or anything. Um, and I think I had even mentioned to Barbara, I was like, I really don't know Zoom that well. I'm going to have to figure it out, et cetera. Now I'm a Zoom expert, as is the rest of the world. So I thought tonight would actually be my first time ever teaching on Zoom. That is by far, it is by far my first time. <laughs> we are well past that. Um, so again, thank you. I'm really happy to be here with everybody and thank you for joining me tonight. Um, so what I want to just do first is I want to just give you a little bit of the structure of the evening so you know what's coming. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to just talk about a little bit about the meaning of Birkat zone, basically why we say this, why we pray after meals. After that, we're going to go over the structure of the blessings. Then we will talk about um, in Birkat zone there are special occasions and holidays, special sections that we insert. We'll go over that and then just some concluding thoughts. So. Um, so to begin with, again, the meaning of your zone. why do we pray after meals? So just as in Jewish law, we're that we are commanded to make, right, a short blessing on the various foods we eat, or also commands us to make a blessing after we eat. And in a way, maybe it seems a little bit excessive, right, to sort of say, you know, your zone is essentially grace after meals, right, you say it in English. So it's um, excessive to say it twice, but really there's some significance to the blessing that we're reciting afterwards. So after, you know, after you've eaten, you're no longer hungry, your inclination may just be to go on to the next thing because we're all so busy. Um, without even giving a thought to the meal that you just um, were lucky enough to consume. So, you know, reciting Birkat HaMazon really forces us to really take a few minutes after every meal to really pause, show our appreciation for God's blessing, and the care that God gives to us. So Birkat zone, you might know it by another term in the Yiddish term, benching. Um, I grew up calling it benching. Um, and for those who don't know the word benchin in Yiddish means bless. So really when we say we're benching, we are blessing. I'm gonna tell you a really quick short story. When I was younger, the na our neighbors next door were not Jewish. Um, I must've been 10 years old. I was outside, it was Shabbat afternoon. And my mom called me and she said, Helene, it's time to bench. Later, after I went outside, they were like, why did your mother call you in to sit on a bench? Never occurred to me, again, that somebody would even think that, but it makes total sense. But it's Yiddish. Anyway, okay. So, Birkat right? This blessing, Birkat it's 
actually a series of blessings, right? To be recited after, um, technical bichromosome should only be recited after we eat bread, because bread in Jewish law is really what officially constitutes a meal. Um, bichromosome can also be said, can be said when you're sitting at the table, or if you at least have the um, table in view. When I was younger growing up, my dad also liked to put away, to clear away any knives, including the knife that we cut the challah with, um, because a knife was considered like a weapon and we shouldn't have a weapon out on the table when we are saying blessing. Just another side note. Um, and okay, so let's move on. So again, it's a nice thing to say if you're cut on but it's more than just a really nice thing to say after a meal. It's actually a mitzvah comes from the Torah. So in Dvarim, um, chapter, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10, it says, and you shall eat and be satisfied and bless Adonai your God for the good land which God has given you. And that is the part in um, Birkat Amazon we say, Be'achalta, Be'savachta, Uvarachta, and we're going to talk about that. So it actually comes right from the Torah and is included in the Birkat Amazon. So that's our introduction. Why do we say this? So now let's move on and we'll talk about the actual structure of the blessing. So the blessing, the Birkat Amazon. And just tell me when you want me to put it up on the screen and which part. Perfect, thank you. Um, so Birkat Amazon is composed of four blessings, three of which were composed around the time of Ezra and the Great Assembly, and a fourth one which was added after the destruction of the temple. So the blessing that we are, do the, the version, I should say, of Birkat Amazon that we are doing this evening is the shortened version, the Kitsur. Um, so the themes in both the short and the long version are identical. It's just a shortened way of saying the same thing. Um, and this shortened version is actually based um, on the rulings of Rambam, what needed to be included in it. So also, when one is in a rush and doesn't have time to say the long version of your Amazon, that's with the proper Kabana, that's really when you recite that. Um, that is technically when you recite it. Um, again, if you, your you or your children, grandchildren have been or go to Camp Ramah, you'll know this is what they recite at Camp Ramah. Um, and that kids technically, most kids know this one more than they actually know the long one. But again, so this should be said, um, if you're in a rush and you don't have the proper kavana to recite the long one. Um, some people also say, if you don't understand what you're saying in the long one, better to recite the short one. Um, with that idea and then knowing what you're saying than just reciting something long that you don't understand. Okay. All right, so let's move in to the actual blessings. Okay, Ellen, if I can have the first blessing. Hold up. All right, so first blessing. So there is a name for these four blessings. The first blessing is called Pirkat Hazan basically praises God for sustaining life. So this, I'm just going to open mine. So this is the one, the very first one we start. Praising That's what God. You want. It's uh, there. Hold on, wait. It is, I have it minimized here. Um, yes. Okay. Right. So we're praising God um, for sustaining life, providing food for us. We bless God who sustains the entire world, kindness, goodness, with mercy. Um, and it's because of God's goodness that we've never been in need in the past and also says in the future, right? May we never be in need. And it's really a beautiful, beautiful tribute to God. Um, we basically say God sustains all, does good to all. And there are words, um, this part where God is, you know, sustains all. He who el zanu mefarnes la kol, ume tiv la kol, ume chin mazon, the chol briotav asher bara God sustains all. And the blessing here, the concluding blessing here is Baruch Ata Adonai Hazan Et HaKol. Blessed is God, the Lord, who provides food for all. So now one of the things, when you are in, when there is a group that has eaten together, this part of the blessing um, is often sung out loud. Even if other parts are sung silently, this part is sung out loud. Um, and I know I have many fond memories of chanting your Padmazon out loud at home, um, I went to day school when I was younger, Camp Rama, when I went to JTS, um, at Hillel. So, um, 
I know people really have a fond attachment to singing Birkat Hamazon. And this blessing, this first blessing, is attributed to Mo Moshe, to Moses, um, and that he established it in response to the miracle of God providing the manna in the desert to the people, which is how we get the idea that the Lord provides food for all. So then if we move down to the next blessing, if you're following along in your own text, this starts with no delachad unai Eloheinu. So when we get to this part, this next blessing is known as birkat ha'aretz. And we thank God for being compassionate, nourishing the Jewish people, both with food and also with Torah. And it really, in shortened version, summarizes Jewish history, basically from Yitzhak Mitzrayim, from the Exodus, to the conquering of the land of Canaan. And the blessing also mentions that just as God sustained the Jewish people in the desert, so too God continues to sustain them and will do so in the future. And it is in this part where we have the verse from Dvarim, from Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy excuse me, Ve'achalta v'savata uverachta et Adonai Elohecha al ha'arat ha'tova, asher matama. So there is the verse that comes from Dvarim. So now we will get to this section later, but in this part right here, after this second blessing, this is where there are additional paragraphs added. Um, there's an additional paragraph added on Purim, same paragraph is added on Hanukkah. Also, this is where you would add the paragraph for Rosh Chodesh, Shabbat, and again, we'll go over these later as well. Um, in this second blessing, Birkat Ha'aretz, this blessing was established by Yehoshua, by Joshua, when the Jewish people entered the land of Israel. Okay, if we move on now to the third blessing, this one, if you're following along, starts with Uvene Yerushalayim Er HaKodesh Bimhera Bihameinu. It's a very short one, um, and rightfully it has the name, you know, it starts Uvene Yerushalayim, Yerkat Yerushalayim, right? And this blessing basically begs God to be merciful and continue to support Jewish people. So there, you know, the first, so you'll have seen that the first two blessings basically praise God. Um, but this blessing, the tone shifts slightly, and we're adding a plea to God to quickly build, um, rebuild Jerusalem. Build upon Jerusalem, the holy city in our time. Praised are you, Lord, who in the Lord's mercy rebuilds Jerusalem. And then at the end, we respond, amen. Basically, I agree. So again, little shift in tone from the first two blessings um, to this one, which adds a plea to God. And this blessing is attributed to um, both David and Solomon. You're continuing on. The next one, the fourth blessing, starts Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam and then HaMelech HaTov V'Hemetiv. So this blessing is known as Birkat HaTov V'Hemetiv, just like those first couple words say. And it basically stresses um, the various positive relationship between the Jewish people and God. And at the end of this, ble the blessing ends by basically voicing the hope that God will never deny us any good. And interestingly enough, if you look in the text, either on your screen or in your um, calendar or your bencher, you will nerd notice many versions of the word with the root hov, meaning good, in this paragraph. Hamelech, we have tov, metiv, etiv, metiv, yetiv. So we have five basically in a row um, with the whole idea of basically goodness. Um, okay, so this, that, so this, these four blessings now that we have just gone over, this basically makes up the core of your Amazon. And there are even some people who finish benching when they reach this point because they feel they've satisfied the mitzvah, um, you know, reciting these four blessings. So you can, in theory, stop here. However, we are going to continue learning. Okay, so after, for those who continue benching at this point, um, Ellen, we are going to skip the inserts. Um, if you can actually just go to a page that has all of the harachamans, we're just going to talk about them overall right now. Um, so the first one is here. And then you want all the holiday ones or no? Um, right now I'm just giving an 
overview. So you can just pause on any of them. I'm not actually going to talk okay. about any specific ones. So I have uh, Ms. Subin Khan and then the Shabbat Rosh Chodesh and Rosh Hashanah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so after this fourth blessing, there's a series, I guess you would say, of short liturgical statements, and they all begin with the same word, harachaman, may the compassionate one. Um, and then following this, each one asks for something from God. Oh, one, I'll go to the next ones too, so we can see more. Can see Perfect. So Just, one asks God to eternally stay the ruler of the Jewish people. Another one asks God to um, grant the, the, um, grant the person, the speaker, basically an honorable livelihood. Another one asks to send the Messiah. Another one asks to restore us for a year in goodness and in blessing. Um, and we have different ones for different holidays, again, which we're going to get to later, that ask for specific things related to the holidays. Um, but here, basically, you will, and I know that there is coming up another lecture, another webinar where you're going to be learning how to sing it. And when you are in a group, you will see that often what happens is the leader will sing the whole harachaman. Sometimes you will have the group join in for the last few words, and sometimes you'll just have the group join in, um, responding amen, basically saying they agree. And that is just basically just custom of wherever you are, whoever house is house you are eating at at the time. Oops, I just lost my place. Give me one second. Um, okay, so what I want to move on to now is Birkatamazon special occasions and holidays. So. First thing is, and Ellen, you don't have to flip to this right now, this part, um, but just so you know, the next thing, if you can go to it, will be the Ritze that we're adding. Um, so on Shabbat and holidays, there are various additional blessings um, and small changes to the text of Birkat HaMazon to really mark those special occasions. So on holidays, including Shabbat, um, and special occasions, <clears throat> excuse me, a wedding or Sheva Brachot, for example, we include Psalm 126, Shir Hamalot. And that's recited before Bir Kadamazon. And this is basically just a really beautiful psalm that really expresses, expresses, excuse me, the Jewish people's longing for the end of the exile and our deep faith in God's protection and love. So first- I was gonna go to that. To the Ritze? No, uh, the 126 if you wanted. You don't want oh, that? No, no, I'm sorry. No, we're going to go to Ritze. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. And the Ritze in the abbreviated is quite abbreviated. It is very abbreviated, yes. Okay. That is true. And to tell everybody, this is the proof of the new calendar diary that you can order that we have in stock. And there it is. Okay. Great. So Ritze, um, again, it begins with the words Ritze, and this is basically, you add this in on Shabbat. Um, and we're basically, in this paragraph, we're asking God to find favor and strengthen us in observance of basically God's mitzvot, specifically here on the seventh day, our, right, the holy Shabbat, which God commanded us to rest. So as you see, the various inserts you're going to see all specifically relate to the holiday or to Shabbat, um, um, to the occasion that we are saying them. So I want to pause for a moment. Um, actually, you know what? Um, uh, no, I'm going to go back to this. Sorry. Okay. Um, now we are going to go to another thing that we insert. Um, and this begins with Eloheinu velohe avotenu. On the same page. It's good. <laughs> okay, perfect. So this part, again, that begins with Eloheinu velohe avoteinu, this is added on Rosh Chodesh, when we bench on Rosh Chodesh, which is the new month, and on the following holidays, on Pesach, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret, and Simchat Torah. And basically in this section, we really are asking God to keep us in mind, remember us for good, and respond to us favorably with blessing, redeem us with life, show us compassion and care, and have mercy upon us. Okay, 
Now, what I wanted to add to this is another thing that, and now I, I apologize, Ellen, that I'm making you flip up and back. Um, I wanted to just go over um, the Z moon. Okay. So at the beginning. And I'll tell you that our group, some people were on a call where we studied the chapter in Mishnah Brachot that discusses the Zimun. So oh, some fantastic. people, not everyone was on it, but a lot were. So fantastic. You want it in the Hebrew, the English? Um, I, I'm just going over it in general. Work. Okay. So yeah, that is totally, that is complete. This is transliterated and, um, English, so it probably will work for all. Great, okay. So this Zimun, um, so basically there are two different ways that the beginning of your Kadama zone changes. First is if you have three people together, three adults, I should say, so they have to be bar bat mitzvah age ready. Um, when you have three adults together, that is considered a Zimun. And basically when they do this, um, Birkatama zone basically is then considered, it's elevated from basically an individual prayer to a communal one. And a special invitation is added in the beginning for those around to partake in Birkatama zone. I sort of, I consider it similar to the call and response in Barhu when we begin and the rabbi of the Chazan begins and then the congregation responds. So think of it, if you haven't heard of it, heard it before, think of it in that call and response. Um, because basically, what does the leader say? They go, friends, let us give thanks, basically. Like they're opening a speech. Then the group responds, may the leader be praised now and forever. Then the leader says, Birshut basically saying, with the consent, right? With the consent of my friends here, Birshut Mishelo. Let us praise God of whose food we have partaken. People respond to that. Then at the end, everyone says together, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo, praise be God and praise be God's name. Now there is one more thing that, it, that can change in the Zimun. Now this happens when you have 10 people. When you have 10 people, the leader would say, instead of saying, we then will add God's name into it. Inviting God into it as well. It takes it to another level. Um, there are some people who also have the custom um, of reciting Birkat Mazon over a cup of wine if they have 10 or more people um, and it's a type of then communal meal. Can we go back now to um, Shir Hamalot? I say go back, but it's really going to the beginning. And I realize it probably will be more friendly to all if I do it with the transliteration and the Hebrew. I wasn't thinking Wait. about it before, so. So Shir HaMalo, I'm not gonna sing because I'm not a singer, um, but Shir HaMalo, there are so many beautiful tunes to sing this. Um, and I love, there's tons, I love them all. Um, so hopefully in the next webinar, um, you guys will be going over some of them, but there are a lot of different melodies that add to it. But what I've noticed is that we sing it, but we have no idea what we are saying. Um, I find that throughout Birkata Mazon, there are familiar words throughout, you know, again, like we talked about the word Tov is in there a lot, Yerushalayim, Eretz, land, there's words that a lot of people might recognize throughout, but in, um, again, it's a psalm, it has a lot of words that are not necessarily um, as familiar to people. So I thought we would just go through this and just see what is this that we are starting, your cut, that we are, that is so important, right, to say before we even begin. Um, so again, we say, Shir HaMalot, a song of ascents. So I'll just read, B'Shuv Adonai, B'Shuv Adonai, et Shivat Zion, Hayinu Kechomim, when Adonai returned us to Zion, we were like dreamers, our mouths filled with laughter, our tongues with song. 
אז יאמרו הגויים, הגדיל אדוני לעשות עם אלה. The nation said, how אדוני has raised them up. הגדיל אדוני לעשות עמנו, היינו שמחים. אדוני did raise us up, and we were happy. שובה אדוני אל שיבי... So hard to read it and not sing it. שובה אדוני את שיביתנו כאפיקים בנגב. Make our return, אדוני. Like the streams suddenly gushing in the Negev, Hazorim de Dima, Berina Yitzaru, may those who sow with tears harvest song, Haloch Yelech Ubacho, Nose Meshech Hazara, Bo Yavo Berina, Nose Alumotav. In tears, the sower walks back and forth carrying the basket of seed. May the farmer return carrying the harvested sheaves singing. And what I find beautiful is actually part of the commentary that is actually in Lev Shalem. And I just want to read it to you because I think it's just some, it's just really beautiful. It says, Psalm 126 centers on a vision of the joy of return from exile. Appropriately, since it describes the return to the land, its central images are agricultural. The contrast between the work of planting and the joy of harvesting may serve as a metaphor for the work of the week and the enjoyment of Shabbat and the festivals. Again, so there's the reason, right, because we're, we think that it is referring to Shabbat and festivals, so we that is the re, that is when we add Shir Hamala. We don't say it during the week. Um, and then there's one more part that just says there's some ambiguity as to whether the psalm describes a past event, um, the return of the exiles, probably from the Babylonian exile, or the hope for a future return. Um, and I just think it's really just it just is a really beautiful um, beginning to. Zone to thanking God for this meal that we just um, that we that we just consumed basically, and we're thanking God for it. And again, as I said, there are many beautiful tunes to it. Okay, so basically, what I would like to do now, um, Ellen, if you can go to the various harachaman that section. Getting to it. Yep, take your time. Do you want to see if there are any questions? Yes, let me, hold on. Oh, should I stop? Well, let me get to yeah, the point. Let's, um, yeah, let's pause on with the screen share. And okay. then does anybody have any questions? Let me just, hold on, put a bigger view. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'll stop the share. I just want to get on the page of the Harachamans. Like Shabbat and Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Chodesh, those? Um, Is that what you're gonna Shabbat, do? Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, festivals, Rosh Hashanah, yeah, you got it, perfect. Okay, perfect. all right. All right, now and we can see everybody. Hold on, my view is not pulling everybody up. Give me one second. What was, I see, I saw one just popped up. What was the name of the fourth blessing you asked? I just saw somebody, Pamela, just popped that up. Fourth mm, blessing Paula. is Pilkat Hat. Oops, Paula, sorry. Was it Paula? Did you ask that or you have another question? Wait, let okay. me see. Let me just look at the chat. Is that what she asked? Yes, Paula Ferguson. Okay. What was yeah. the name of the fourth blessing? So the name of the fourth blessing is Birkat Hatov Vahametiv. That's the one that had a lot of variations of the word Tov in it. Um, people can and also a question of what was the first blessing? Sure. Do you, so why don't, you know what, why don't I just go through the names again of the blessings, um, and this way you will all have them. Hang on one second. Okay. So again, the first blessing is Birkat Hazan, praising God for sustaining life and providing food for us. Second one, Birkat Ha'aret. Again, the theme there. Um, we thank God for being compassionate, nourishing the Jewish people, both with food and with Torah. The third blessing, Yerkat Yerushalayim, um, where we beg God to be merciful and continue to support the Jewish people. And the fourth blessing, Yerkat HaTov um, really stresses that God will never basically deny us anything good and has provided us good and sustenance throughout. Great questions. Any other questions? You can put them in the chat box, or I just apologize that I can't see everyone. If you raise your hand, 
on screen, we could call on you. I just can't get everybody and on. I think screen. people are able to unmute themselves too if they want oh, to. Great. So if you have a question that way. Any questions? Okay, I don't see any. So what I, I also wanted to take through uh, memories of your singing before from, again, could be anything. Do you have fond memories? And is there something specific that, you know, when you think of, because again, as I said, when I think about the, the most enjoyable time that I'm in college, rabbinical school, and summer, it's because there were so many people doing it together, like to share and to yourself. Any fun memories, anybody? <laughs> no fun? I really enjoy a convention when there's 500 women singing it together. And yeah. it's, it's all in a female tone of voice. I really enjoy it at Women's League Convention. I um, mm. grew up and I grew also. Was somebody speaking? I'm sorry to cut somebody off. Andrea. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I grew up not singing it at all. We were at a reform show. And um, since I got married and my children, who are 23 and 26, have grown up conservative, I... I want to join part and I can't and they're all talking about memories like my husband all of a sudden has connection with other people sitting at our table at Shabbat you know after Shabbat meals and I'm just I'm flabbergasted I wish I could take part you can <laughs> that's why I want you to learn I can I... have the time now I'm a Jew by choice. I'm a convert. Mm -hmm. So I didn't grow up with any of this. But okay. my first time to the convention was, what, three years ago. And we, the first couple of nights, we overlapped with the men's event. And yeah. we got to have dinner. And everyone had dinner together. And imagine being in that fantastic room with, I like to say, a thousand people who, who embraced being Jewish because that's the way I see some of my Jewish friends, some people like don't like to be different. And, and all of these, and I mean, there were old men and old women climbing on the chairs with napkins, barrowing <laughs> the beer cut on my toes. And yeah. I just loved it. And of course me, I took it back to my shul. And so I look like somebody who's enjoying themselves, much to the chagrin of the rest of my sisterhood. And I don't care. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I so this, Joan and it looks like Susan wants to speak. So Joan. Yeah, uh, what is the significance of the knocking on the table? Uh, Oh, when I mean, you, you always know the camping mom people because so, yes. they're banging on the table. Camping. Great question. And that is when we say, Al Shulchan Zeh, right? Thank you for when we eat on this table. So they knock. Now, really, it's not really supposed to be like knocking like crazy. You're just really supposed to, like, here, I'll show you on my, right? Just pointing, tapping, right? Al Shulchan Zeh, Shachanu Alav. But it became, has become a banging because again, it's fun and kids are having a good time. But yes, it's not really supposed to be banging like you hear it, but they're having a good time, so. <laughs> and I, I was just gonna say that I have very fond memories of, of, of Birkat and, and uh, Tefillah in general in USY and Camp Ramah. And um, I love it when we bang on the table and I'll do it you know, be it at Women's League or wherever I am. And I love it when other people, you know, in Women's League do it because it just brings back such fond memories. And for me, Women's League is just simply an extension of USY and Camp Vermont. So <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Though. All those memories. So two things I wanted to add. One was when I was on staff at Camp Vermont, Wisconsin in 94, 5, and 6. And Rabbi 
Soloff would yell at everybody that Zot Bracha Velo Shira, that it was a blessing and not a song, and you couldn't bang. So now, skip ahead 20 plus years, and my kids go to Ramah, and at Ramah Rockies, you gotta be banging, you gotta be singing, it's totally. And then Ramah Sports Academy, they totally do. And then another, in tribute to my mother, I started the day school in third grade, and my mother sat with me because after lunch every day, we benched just the first paragraph, but she made sure that I learned, Carol Wallens right there, she made <laughs> sure that I learned the entire Birkat Amazon, that paragraph, I had to have it, I had it memorized because I couldn't read Hebrew, but she tried, she taught me that too. So, and, oh. and there are many little children who, if they grow up with it and they just hear it, it's like going to shul, they just know it by heart. Mm -hmm. They learn through osmosis, I, exactly. Yeah. For the person who wanted to learn it, if I ever get to my car again, which is in another my building mother. where I am staying right now, there is a very good CD out that has the beer wow. Hamazon on it. And if you just play it over and over and over again to yourself, you can learn it. Because that's how I taught one of my granddaughters at, when she was starting a preschool program in Yeshiva. My mother does not know, did not know how to read Hebrew at all. But from going to all the USY things and everything, she, whenever we did Birkat Amazon at home, she joined in with all the words. And I just wanted to say that I learned it when I went on USY pilgrimage and we benched the entire Birkat Amazon, not the short one, the entire one three times a day. After five weeks, I knew it. <laughs> Women's League has a CDs. <laughs> I have to say that I'm very much looking forward to next week because I have never been able to get the Harachamans. I have, it's, Harachamans. I've struggled my entire life with those. So I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to learn them next week. So I have to um, validate the listening to it as a child because I was the tag along to my brother's bar mitzvah breakfast and I was five years old just sat there the whole time and yeah, after right. we were done with it and he was bar mitzvah that still went, I could do it. I, I'm not comfortable doing it out loud, but I knew that backwards and forwards because I heard it every single Sunday. And you'll all get to learn how to sing it next week. And also, I believe it's on our website in addition to the Margie, the CD. If you check the Women's League website, it's right on there. So we have about 20 more minutes, and I believe Rabbi Kornsgold had more that she wanted to teach us, but you're in, just wanted to facilitate, but you're in charge. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I love this, actually. I mean, I have some more things, but this is actually, I love hearing because it actually, it brings it more to life than just the text, right? It's like, for me, the text is great, but the memories associated with it. So I am great. If there are people who still would like to share, I apologize. My, I lost connection here a little bit. Yes, is there anybody else who, you know, wants to share a memory of, before we move on, a memory of your Kadama Zone or from Women's League, you know, learning it or anything before we move on? So, Helene, Rabbi, I'll tell you one little thing, and I'm going to call her out on this. So, Fran, why don't you tell us who you are, <laughs> who your connection is? Wait, I, let me find Fran. Hold on. Fran, Fran Hildebrandt. Okay. Oh, okay. So who are you and why, what is your connection to Birkat Amazon? <laughs> well, actually, the one that you're thinking of, yes. is my brother is Cantor Jeff Shivers. He's our, my youngest brother. He, um, he, he compiled the Behol <laughs> That's right. I was going to say, I know that name well. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can say, I like that. I go by, except it's such a long name. Um, I actually go by Fran Shivitz Hildebrandt. It's just, it's easier, you know, across the screen to have everything on it. So that's, that's my connection. Um, Love that. Love that. Love that. And I, we'll, we'll, we'll talk for a few more minutes and then I'll also open it up for more. Um, if people have comments or they want to share something, but thank you for sharing. I love hearing it all. Um, okay. So if we want to go back to the text, let me also move my screen here for one second. Wait, give me one second. And Fran, you're the one I could see on my screen. It's on here, right? The Harachaman? Yes, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to try to go to the um, 
the transliteration again. Okay, fine, great. Okay, here it is. Okay, so let me see. Okay, great. So, so let's just go through some of these um, in the time we have left and just see what is going on in this section, right? In this section that was added. So the first one is Shabbat, right? Harachaman hu yantri leinu yom shekulo Shabbat umnucha l'chayeha olamim. Again, as I had originally said, sometimes you'll hear people singing this and saying, Harachaman hu yantri leinu yom shekulo Shabbat umnucha, and then everybody else will chime in, l'chayeha olamim. Or if not, the leader will just say the whole thing and everyone will chime in with Amen. Right? So this one is saying, right, Harachaman, may the merciful grant us a day of true Shabbat rest, reflecting the light of eternity. Um, the next one is Rosh Chodesh. Harachaman, hu yichadesh aleinu et ha-chodesh hazeh letova velivracha. This is very similar to what we say in the Rosh Chodesh blessing in the synagogue. May the merciful one renew this month for goodness and for blessing. Next one we move, okay, yours, the next one you have is on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so on Rosh Hashanah, again, we have starts all of the same. Harachaman, Harachaman, hu yichadesh aleinu, et hashanah hazot, v'tova v'libracha. This is very similar in the language you'll notice to Rosh Chodesh, just different at the end. This is basically saying, may the, mer may the, wait, is this the identical one? No, sorry. Um, may the merciful one renew us this year in goodness and blessing. Everything here is identical except Rosh Chodesh has Chodesh, Rosh Hashanah has Et Hashanah Hazot. So once you learn one, you learn two in that one. You get two for one in that one. Okay, so then we have on Sukkot. So for those of you who, if you, you were at synagogue or in your own Sukkot, you have probably heard this one before. Harachaman hu yakim lanu et Sukkot David hanofelet. Mean the merciful one raise the fallen sukkah of David. Oh, and here you have now the festival one. Okay, perfect. On festivals in general, this has that you say. This is now above Sukkot. Harachaman hu yanchilenu yom shekulo tov. This is kind of just saying in a general generic form, may the merciful one grant us a day fulfilled with the spirit of the festival. Okay. Um, let me see what you have here now. Do you have Khan, what you have for, hold on, I'm just looking at what you have pulled up here. Do you have, um, Ellen, if you have for Hanukkah, Purim, do you have those? So we don't have the Harachamans, if there's an additional, but we have the, um, the Al Hanisim and Bimei Matit Yahu. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, except in the shortened version, it has a really small version. So I'll just say it. There is a paragraph that you add. Identical you know, we have that one. We okay, have that. I want to pull that up. So this identical paragraph is what is added. One second, we will get there. Thank you. I appreciate Ellen, you doing this for me, the tech. No, it's okay. And you can all see, as I said before, this is a Proof of our new calendar diary, which you two can own. <laughs> so I'm getting there. Yep, All right, so this is the most recent one of Yom Ha'atzmaut, but you probably don't want to start with Yom Ha'atzmaut, right? We can if you're on. I don't, okay. I don't see that on my screen, but if you see that, that's fine. I don't see Yom Ha'atzmaut here. I just. Fran, do you see it? Unless I'm frozen on Rosh Hashanah. Um, Razel, do you see it? Yes. Okay, so yes. it's up there. Great, so you see Yom Ha'atzmaut? Perfect, yes. okay. I will read that to you. It's possible it's frozen on the side. Harachaman hu ya'aseh lanu nisim v'niflaot k'mo sha'asa la'amenu b'imei hashavat panim ligvulam. May the mercy Okay, so sorry. What we have is the uh, paragraph with the b'imei shivat panim ligvulam. Oh, so you just have... So the Harachaman here just has that N. So again, here's the same content. So there's not the paragraph here, but this is the same content, right? May the merciful one grant us the miracle of deliverance as God did for our people when God restored them to the land of Israel. So in terms of the, for Purim and Hanukkah, um, so Purim and Hanukkah, um, so there is a, Hold on one second. There is a longer paragraph 
that occurs in the regular Birkhadama zone, but in the shortened version, at least here, um, I'm just going to read to you. We do have it. Well, you do. I'm sorry. Yeah. We don't have this at the Harachamans, and for, so for 2022, I'll have to think about that, um, right? The next year. And, but right, we right. do have the paragraphs for that's oh, added. Okay. So um, there, this paragraph, there are different paragraphs added commemorating basically the story of Hanukkah and the story of Purim, um, which are on the screen before you. And the Harachamans basically are just a small snapshot, a summary of this. Um, which actually makes sense why it's in the Kitsor version. Um, and basically for Hanukkah, it's basically, may the merciful one grant us the miracle of deliverance as God did for our ancestors in the days of Matityahu and his sons, um, which is what we talk about in this paragraph, basically. And then for Purim, Harachaman hu ya'aseh lanu nisim v'nit la'ot, Moshe asa la'avotenu v'imei Mordechai ve'eser. May the merciful one grant us the miracle of deliverance as God did for our ancestors in the days of Mordechai and Esther's, which is again, this bottom one where it's saying in the days of Mordechai and Esther, um, what God did for us. Um, okay, then we have another two. This one, if you're following along, is Harachaman hu yivarech et achinu b'nei Yisrael hanutnim b'tzara v'yotziem me'afela la'ora. And I remember, I don't remember who it was, there was a woman who said that the Harachamans, you know, Kind of always trip her up and i think it's because there are so many <laughs> and depending on which you know your kind of my zone version you're using there could be different ones in there um so it is a little tricky but this one is basically made the merciful one bless all of our people who suffer and bring them out of darkness into light and again the reason we're able to have different ones is because um we've already fulfilled the blessing of the Torah to recite your Kadamazon, which are the first four blessings. Then I'm going to move on to one for the state of Israel. Harachaman hu yivarech et medinat Yisrael reshit tzmichat gulatenu. May the merciful one bless the state of Israel, the dawn of our redemption. And now the final paragraph, which start in the short one that we are doing in the short of your Kadamazon, starts Venisa Bracha. And this is just really fun way to sort of end your katamazon, right? Basically saying, may we receive blessings from the from the Lord, loving kindness from God and all of our deliverance. Benisa bracha me'et Adonai utzaka melohei right? Benitsa chen besechel tov. May we find grace and be find, found favorable in God's eyes. And may God who brings peace, right? We have the Ose shalom bimramav. May God who brings peace to God's universe bring peace to us all, to all people, Israel, and to all humankind. shalom shalom Israel. Then we respond, imru amen. And this is basically where, again, the shortened version ends here. And to just basically go back and summarize, because I know we did a lot of up and back. Um, so I could stop share? You can stop share, yeah. Okay is, it's nice to see everybody also, is that, you know, again, the main structure of, sorry, one, so sorry, I just lost everybody. Give me one second. Well, I see Ellen. There we so, go. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, the main structure of basically reciting Birkata Mazon, these four blessings has remained consistent throughout history. Um, there are, you know, whether it Ashkenazim, Sfardim, um, certain other communities might use slightly different versions of your Um Sfardim, I know there's some added words which appear in the Bikol Achad, but they're in parentheses. Those are the added ones. Um, so, and it's not surprisingly that, you know, that the most variations occur basically after these additional blessings in this whole Harachaman section, because the first four is the standard text, and afterwards is really where it expands it upon. And you know, as different things occur in the world, that different blessings were added. Um, not blessings, different, different. Um, the harachamans. You're yeah, to? yeah. I can't think of the word, but not a blessing, but different. Um, har I'll just say it harachamans. Different harachamans were added afterwards. Um, and um, and again, there are different different sections that we add to commemorate and celebrate holidays, Shabbat, 
wedding, there's a whole different structure that we add for our wedding. Um, in the beginning, when we have three people, we add Izzy Moon, um, we start with Izzy Moon, and when we have 10 people, we add the word Eloheinu. And also, on Shabbat and Chagim, we also add Shir Hamalot. Um, so now, if there are any questions, comments, um, you want... I just want to add two things. One, and when we have our Leadership Institute, the leadership training, the, you learn the Birkat zone there. We go over it. And you also get your own card. And in addition, the Birkat zone, the uh, song, listening to the music of it, you'll learn it next week too. But in addition, it's in our resources section in the member section of our Women's League website. So I'm sure that if you send Razel an email, she can help you find it. Is that okay, Razel? And, um, but it's on the website as well. Just wanted to there add those is, two there, things. There is a question. Jennifer yes. has a question. Do you add the festivals one to the other, one to the other ones? Hold on. Do you oh, add the festivals? Come on. I think she's on the hut. So Do you add the festivals really, one to the other? So this is really interesting. And Ellen, maybe you can also, so the, the festival one to me is, it's a generic one. I actually, to be honest with you, grew up not reciting it. We just always recited the one that was pertinent. It was only when I was older, I started also adding it. So what do and you do? It's funny because I was going to ask you about that, but I want to put you on the spot because people have said to me the Sukkot David Hanofelet, people only do the first two days of Sukkot and they don't do it the last days of Sukkot. So the mm -hmm. Kulot Tov I do for the Shalosh Regalim, so for Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Okay. And then if you look, it's interesting, if you look at other benchers, you can actually see how the Jewish community has politically changed depending on who, what, who they pray for. Israel, Israel and our neighbors, the different ways of the terminology that of that. That is and correct. I, and I'm wondering if what Joan, and because I do sometimes too, um, people, because people have different ways of which parts of the Harachaman the community joins up together with and which the others do. So I'm hoping next week we'll get that squared away. The singing is next week. Was that part of what your question was? That some parts people say all together, some parts people say the harachamans is the last. Well, that yeah. and just uh, I just stumble over the the Hebrew in that part. It's, okay, it's always you know. I, I think because it's also it's not Hebrew we normally say anywhere else. A lot of that, right? And I think also just yeah. with the singing, it's hard to always get it right to fit it in where it's all supposed to be fit in. <laughs> I totally get that. And it looks like Carol Wallens one has a question, or she's just fiddling. You have a no, question? I, I'm looking at the uh, <laughs> Halafad, and in the long version, they don't have Harachaman for Yom uh, for Israel Independence Day or Purim or Hanukkah, but in the shortened version, there's Harachaman for those three. So what I come to gather from um, that, unless unless they've revised it since this Bechal Chad that I have. I think so. You have a, if you, I don't know if you have a specific answer. I mean, for me, what I thought it was just because this is the Kitsur version, shorter version. So instead of saying the Bimei Matityahu and the whole thing, we just say, here's a snapshot of what we are talking about. So in the long version, hey, if you're saying the long version, you have plenty of time on your hands. You can say the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. And it's interesting because in the Women's League, in our, um, in the calendar diary, we have a shortened version of, of the Bimei Matityahu about the whole story about Matityahu, the, um, an abridged version of Hanukkah, Purim, and Yom Atzma'ut, and yet we didn't, we haven't put in the Harachaman for those three times. And this so, is where you see all the variations occur. Yes, it's a very much a variety. <laughs> it's a variety pack, but that's okay. It's all right to have variations. That's okay. And we do have time for more questions, if there are any. Okay, I want to say something. It's Barbara Kaplan. I found this to be very um, educational. And I wasn't sure if I was going to um, you know, log on tonight. I'm very glad that I did. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank, Thank you. you. you explained everything so in a very um, easy way. You know, just want to say oh, that. thank you so much. Good. I'm so glad. I'm glad. That was the goal. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> And Fran, you have your hand up. 
I do. You know, I'm a former teacher, so I tend to still raise my hand. Um, I really enjoyed it. I do have a background in it, and yet there's still more that I don't know, and I really, really enjoyed the discussion and hearing all of what everybody else had to say, and just, uh, I feel like I learned a lot, so thank you. Oh, thank you. Good, I'm so glad, good. And what we had hoped was that when we were all together in Schomburg, we would sing Birkat Amazon together, and there'll be other opportunities, maybe not this July, to be in Schomburg together for convention, but future times that we can all sing it together. But at least now you know what you're saying. You. Which is half the battle. Yes. <laughs> is, is this information shareable? Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Well, I, I just wanted to ask because I, I'm not sure. I don't know Rabbi Kornsgold, but um, this is the kind of thing I like to go back with and kind of encapsulate and share with people because. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Anytime. Thank you. It's actually now it, it the live stream on Facebook worked. God knows what my connections are like, but it's live streaming on Facebook and we're also recording it. So. I just want to share that. One of the sweetest things I think we've done at several conventions because we make the Birka Hamazon teaching so much an integral part of the Leadership Institute because these are our leaders and we do the short version, fair is fair, and it's never Shabbat. You don't have to open the centerfold um, so that it's really a short version and that for the last several conventions, as we've had multiple people get the honor to lead the Birka Hamazon, we always have the alums the graduates of the Leadership Institute get up as a group and do it. And um, oh. it's really very sweet that they do on on mass. There's a lot of them. There's hundreds of people that have taken the course. But it's a, it, it just validates that something that they took the time to learn if they didn't know it and that we acknowledge that and they're still part of it. And it's really cool. Wonderful. And I have to just share, I belong to a, well, it closed. So I'll say this kindly. Let me just see if my president's here. I belonged up until about five years ago to a conservative shul. And not by choice, just by where I lived. It, you know, it wasn't a judgment call. It was just nobody was, you know, 50 years ago, 40 years ago when we joined. And so I never really had the opportunity to lead the Berkut Hamazon because usually the guys would do it. It just was a standard in our shul. And I was the first woman president who could sit on the bima and do the announcements in English. There you go. But I never had an opportunity to lead it there because I was on, except for when I was in BBG and we did the one big paragraph and that was all we did. And so years later, I remember Corey was a president once and she said, well, you're going to lead it at one of our women's league board meetings. And I was like, oh no. She said, oh yeah, the only way you're going to learn it is if you have to like teach it to yourself and then do it and, and challenge me. Um, of course, I still don't go to the centerfold, but I'm good for any other day other than Shabbat. <laughs> so I don't open the centerfold. But it's very, <laughs> you know, it's like when you push yourself to learn something that you didn't. Absolutely, I, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. I love that. And when when thank Corey, you everybody. When Corey teaches you to yeah. um, lead Birkat Hamazon, she yeah. adds a dance into the middle. There's a rhythm it. to it. That's right. There's a rhythm to it. She, oh. she actually sings with a. There's a dance move. <laughs> but it comes from the, you know, and, and the beat and, and the words in this, the spacing of the words. And, yeah. Rabbi Kornskull, thank you very much for teaching us this evening. It was fantastic. And thank I'll just so much. let Barbara Ezrin close as this was an education program. Oh, thank you all for coming tonight. And thank you, Rabbi Kornskull, for teaching us. Um, and I hope Thank you'll you. join us again next Thursday night when Erica Velazquez is going to teach us how to sing Birkat Amazon and lead it. I don't know if she's doing any dance steps, but <laughs> <laughs> she is going to teach us how to sing it. Um, and I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow at one o'clock to study Psalms and say Misha Berach and Kaddish. Thank you. And this is what the new calendar diary looks like. So if you want to order it, we're not, we're, we're working remotely, but we're going to get a huge group together of orders and then someone's going to go into the office to send them out. Thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you, everybody. Have a Thank great you. night. Shabbat shalom to all. Thank Shabbat shalom.